They say the same thing that makes you laugh will make you cry. This is who Clay Thompson has always been. Clay has fueled himself through feeling slighted in one way or another, whether it was living in Steph's shadow, not making the top 75 list, or, or just not being mentioned amongst the other elite wings during the prime of his career. Clay has found a way to fuel himself through that slight, and here he is leaving the Warriors feeling slighted. Clay signs a three year, $50 million deal with the Mavericks, which apparently is less than what the Warriors were offering, but clearly it wasn't about the money. Clay had felt slighted. We'll talk about, you know, what this means moving forward here in a minute. First, I want to reflect on this legacy that Clay is leaving with the Warriors. He's my favorite Warrior during this dynasty, regardless of the last two years. And again, we'll get to that. But they say you can tell a lot about a man's character when things are going wrong, right? It's, it, it's always easy. When everything's right, it's easy for everybody to act right. But when things are going wrong, then you can kind of see how someone is built. And I think that that's what's been overlooked during this run. When things were going wrong for the Warriors, Steph's hanging his head, bad body language, Draymond is boiling over in frustration. A lot of the time it was Clay that said, get on my back. I got this in these big high pressure leverage moments. And I don't think that part of the story has been told enough. But if you were there, you were outside and you lived it, you'd know. There were a lot of moments where it looked like it was crumbling or we weren't going to get over the hump. And it wasn't Steph. It wasn't Draymond. It was Clay in those big moments that was like, nah, I got this. I got us. And so make no mistake about it. The Steph Curry, the greatest point guard of all time right now that we all have come to know and love, we wouldn't have this Steph Curry without Clay playing along his side. When it comes to trying to change the way you eat and that lifestyle, right? People don't want to use the word diet. But the truth is, it's super hard to get started. And I think that that's where Factor can really help a lot of you out. Fresh, never frozen food delivered directly to your doorstep, all dietitian approved. And just try it for a month because it's going to give you the structure and the incentive to get started. And getting started, in my opinion, is the hardest thing and getting into that routine now. I've been on keto for, I don't know, six weeks now, and I'm not going back. I don't see any reason to. My new favorite meal is the loaded bacon shredded chicken, 41 grams of protein. And when I tell you it's smacking, it's smacking. Like I'd eat it every day if I could, but I don't want to get greedy. But whether it's keto, uh, healthy choice, locale, chef's choice, they've got a vegan menu, over 35 different choices per week. It takes two minutes and you're done. It's routine, it's consistent, and it's going to help give you that structure initially to get started with this lifestyle. So head over to factor75.com or click the link in the description and use the code alchemy50 for 50% 50 off your first box and an additional 20% off next month's order. That's factor75.com, code alchemy50 for 50% 50 off that first box plus an additional 20% off next month's order. That's the truth of the matter. And that aloof, stubborn personality is what allowed him to fit so perfectly next to Steph and Draymond. And it's that aloof and stubborn personality that ultimately has him leaving right now. And it started in that game six in the 19 finals when he blew the knee. Because again, the aloof, stubborn personality that Clay is that's worked so well for him he didn't follow the rehabilitation process for that ACL. And then what do you know? There goes the Achilles. And so, boom, Clay Thompson was robbed of the prime of his career. I think we all saw it in that game. Clay might have won that finals without KD. It felt like Clay was going to take over and have his moment. All of a sudden, it's all snatched from him. Two plus years of his career, and the Clay Thompson that returned was not the same Clay Thompson, not just physically, psychologically, mentally. He was scorned. He was jaded. He was slighted, but it was too much. It was too much. And I don't think 
there was anything that the organization could have done for it that would have made him feel any different. This, this was an internal battle for Clay. We can talk about money and, and, and roles and off the bench. This is an internal battle for Clay. And so moving to the Dallas Mavericks, I think that this is a step in recovering and in, in getting, in, in, I shouldn't even say recovering, but um, refinding his love of basketball in a new surrounding, in a new role where he doesn't have to be the Clay Thompson that he lost, if that makes sense. Um. So, yeah, man, I mean, it's a tough day for Dub Nation, you know, uh, all, all, all the all the love and luck to Clay, even though he's a, hey, I'm going to be talking my stuff when, when we playing him, right? And we'll be rooting against him because, you know, game recognized game and, and, and all that. But, um, yeah, man, it, you know, uh, now I don't know the details. It says Josh Green is going to get flipped over to Charlotte. Talking and thinking a little bit about this, this mat, this matchup in this, um, this pairing or this trio, if you will, I expect Clay to shoot much better for this Mavericks team because I think that he's going to shoot from a standstill much more often. And, and, and to be clear, he didn't. Clay didn't do a whole lot of moving this last year off the ball, but he did. He he, he did some movement shooting, right? I think he's going to get probably three wide open threes a game playing off Luca and Kyrie's gravity, right? And it's much more of a stagnant offense which usually is a negative term, but I think it's a positive for where he's at in his career. It's shooting, you know, stationary corner threes, skip pass wing threes, where, you know, he he's going to be ultra efficient, knocking that down. Um, big game shooter. He's not going to be afraid to take any of these shots. Now, I am going to smirk at the first time him and Luca shoot each other looks of like, hey, you're really going to shoot that? And he's like, yeah, I'm really going to shoot that. You really going to shoot that? And that would be my concern um, if I'm a Mavericks fan is – you do have in Clay and Luca two of the worst body language teammate guys where it's like, oh, you know, like, you know, we'll see. We'll see how, you know, how, how that goes. And then ultimately, if you have Luca, Kyrie, and Clay all on the floor closing, that's a lot of different options to choose to attack because both Luca and Clay, they don't just share the body language uh trait, they both share the effort trait where there are defensive possessions where it's like, F it, I'm not moving. I'm not budging. Like, there's, I'm just going to watch, right? And so they're going to have to overcome that. But you got Lively, Gafford, and, you know, it makes sense on paper. The spacing and all that and a fresh start for him. I didn't see the Texas fit um, as a lifestyle thing. We know he likes, you know, he's, he's a, he's a babe, not a bay boy, but a, um, a coastal kid, if you will. So, hey, you know, there's plenty of lakes out in Texas. Maybe he'll get into uh, to firearms. I don't know. Um, but yeah, man, shout out to clay, you know, and it, all things come to an end here and I wish him the best other than when he's playing us. What other news, you know, I, I know dub nation is down bad right now. The Paul George news, um, Clippers, man, listen, I'm in the camp of teams do not want to trade with us. That that's what I think. And I, I mean, 10 years of dominance, that's what, that's, what's going to happen. And so I understand the frustration from the fan base and, and everybody saying, oh, they're doing nothing. I think it's much harder for us to, to make some of these deals than it would the Detroit Pistons or the Indiana Pacers or these teams that, that, that there has to be um, the human element in these deals involved with relationships, divisions. And then, of course, this new CBA is making it harder than ever. I am relieved, at least, that Paul George went east. It seems like the east is getting stronger. I know all we've heard is this Western Conference is loaded and loaded. I don't know, man. The east looks like, you know, OKC, I will say, looks, you know, as good as any team in the league right now on paper. But other than that, the east um, on paper looks stronger to me. What other moves are there to be made? Now, the latest is Lori Markinen. I guess the one thing that I'll say about the Paul George deal in closing is I also did not want to give up Kaminga. Uh, I like you, is it spin control? Because at first it came out that the Clippers turned down multiple deals that involved Moody Kaminga, like the kitchen sink. And it was like, Oh, the Clippers are kind of crazy, right? That's spiteful. And then it came out. Oh no, the, the sticking point was Kaminga and Pajemski. Now, that to me sounds more realistic. It could just be spin from the Warriors side. Like, oh no, we weren't trying to trade y'all. Like, no, 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 that was the sticking point, right? It could just be that. We'll never know. 
But I, I do think in my gut that the Clippers, if this if this deal was being orchestrated with uh, OKC or perhaps uh, Indiana, Paul George wanted to go back to Indiana. I don't know if they, they would have driven such a hard bargain. It, it might have went through. Now the parts would have been different and we'll never know. But um, I was in the camp of, no, I don't want to give up Kaminga. Once you give up Kaminga and all like and Wiggins and Chris Paul, like that's too much, in my opinion, for a 34-year-old uh, podcast P. So it may be a blessing in disguise, as disappointing as it is. We move on to the Lori marketing rumors. Are you... Are you willing to give up Kaminga? Because that's what it's, it's going to take Kaminga pods and probably two or three first round picks. And it'd be exciting right now if that news came across the wire right now. That's a lot, man. That's a lot. I don't know about that one either. But let's be honest here. At a certain point, I think, I guess I'll just use the word desperate, right? That I think that, you know, the fan base and, and perhaps the team, it's like you start scrambling. Remember weeks ago, Slater reported, oh, the Warriors, they're not interested in Brandon Ingram. Like, they, they, he's not their type of guy, right? Well, they might be interested in Brandon Ingram now. You know what I mean? Um, don't shoot the messenger. But seeing that they're flipping Josh Green to Charlotte, could they sign Miles Bridges with the mid-level exception? And you say, oh, no, no, no. Like, that's, I don't even want to get into that discussion but the fact of the matter is they they housed Anthony Lamb for a season. So I, I don't know. Again, desperate people do desperate things. And as this free agent pool shrivels, the options do as well. I think the truth of the matter is that Jonathan Kaminga is probably the greatest hope right now for this organization. And you talk about an Ingram, you talk about a marketing, Jeremy Grant, you know, these guys, are we, are we not sure that by March, Jonathan Kaminga isn't viewed as the better player and the better asset moving forward. You see the work he's putting in. I, I like what I see, the ball handling, the mid-range game. The, the, we know he's got the juice, and we know he's got the talent, and this seems like the right phase in his career for both he and Moody to step up. So I get being pessimistic about the future and being disappointed, but it's not done yet. I think we have to let the dust, dust settle. Um, and see what they do come up with. But I think if they're going to come off Kaminga, I don't know who's out there that uh, that I, that is a no-brainer. I, I, I don't know that. But, um, yeah, man, tough, tough cup 48 hours here for, for Dub Nation. But we, we keep moving, man, and keep supporting the team. And uh, I'll be back to cover what does happen. I don't know. We could be waiting all week. Or I could be back on here later today with the video. I appreciate y'all for supporting the channel. If you haven't, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. YouTube, you don't get the, the notifications, but that really does support the channel. I try not to bombard y'all with, hey, in the beginning of every video, please subscribe and do this and do that, right? I just try to do it in the sign-off. But every now and then, I try to remind y'all that obviously it helps the channel um, by subscribing and hitting that bell. Yeah, man, we love you, Clay, and uh, I'll be back when uh, more news hits. I'm out, y'all.